Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of My New Life. I'm your host, Jibreel. Today, we're going to be discussing a very, very important topic, one of the five pillars of Islam, which is Ramadan. Ramadan is something that is very well known amongst the world. Uh, Non-Muslims and Muslims know very much about Ramadan, um, and it presents a number of challenges to us. But the reward is immense. So without any further ado, let me introduce my co-host for the show, Jibreel Abu Asya. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you? I'm good, alhamdulillah, I'm good, good. So, um, before you accepted Islam, yeah. obviously I'm sure you'd heard about Ramadan. It's one of the main things that people mm. know about Islam. <coughs> what were your thoughts about the idea of potentially fasting mm. for 30 days in a row? It was, uh, I was like... I'm one of them people, you know when someone comes to you and says, what, you can't even drink water? You know, you know like, like, like some people say, you can't even drink water, and you're like, right, I was like that, I was like, rah, like, for the whole month, you can't eat, obviously you break your fast at a certain period, yeah. but you're not eating throughout the whole day, like, so I was like, um, before Islam, I was, I was just like, and I used to see it, a lot of people um, fasting in school, in secondary school, like, um, and I used to be cheeky, like those, 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 um, the Muslim, the brothers that we used to be fasting, that like, doing um, Ramadan. I used to take their dinner cards, get extra dessert, and that because I know extra, extra twizzlers, extra, yeah? extra custard on that, mate. Did you have twizzlers in your school? I think so. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Twizzlers yeah. are wavy, but, but everyone knows. But the custard and cake, like that, that was mad. So I used to, I used to, I used to take benefit from from that. But um, Mashallah, he's benefiting from from Ramadan before he's <laughs> <a Muslim, like, laughs> like, But yeah, I um um. When when I obviously got older and started to learn about this, um, about just um, Islam in general, before even I was Muslim, I still thought it was like, oh, like fasting throughout the whole thing, like that's like, like I'm, it's just it's just it's just hard to 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 to, to um, contemplate on it if you're not Muslim. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Like being like, like the sort of conviction it would take to be able to hold that down. Yeah, yeah, and like and, and on top of that, like. No one can see you, like, you can just go around the corner and eat. Yeah. So you could, like, why are you guys so on it? Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, like, the true, ones that you even, know, even, even the, the brothers and sisters that aren't really, like, practicing too mm. tough, like, they, a lot of them fast. Mm. Them mm. They take it's advantage like, of it, yeah. Yeah, it's like one mm. of those things that even if you're not practicing, it seems that you, when it comes to Ramadan, you, yeah, you, yeah. you do it in most instances if Allah grants you the ability mm. anyway. And, when, and as I said before, I was Muslim and I, and I knew people, people that were on doing it proper. Um, I used to always think like, wow, you lot could just go eat. Like, no one will cook. Obviously, like, God is watching you. Allah is watching you. Yeah. But I'm thinking, they, they, your, your mum ain't around. Like, you can just quickly go eat, drink water. Oh, come on, fam. Like, you know what I mean? Do you know you what think, like, right, like, what's actually stopping you? Like, it reminds me of uh, something that my brother, because uh, I've got um, got a twin brother, alhamdulillah, who's a Muslim. Mm. I've got a younger brother called Ezra, who's not a Muslim. And I've got an older brother, a white brother, like, who's called Jamie. Mm. And, um, he was telling me yeah, that during Ramadan he had a Muslim guy in it that was working in his office mm. and he went into one of the rooms and he saw him in the corner, <laughs> saw him in the corner eating. <laughs> <laughs> and he said, don't tell anyone, don't tell anyone, subhanAllah. So it, it's, it's true, like, there's, there's many ways to sort of like cheat, mm. you could say, but really we know cheating that you're cheating, yourself. Exactly. You're, you're cheating yourself. Like, you're cheating you're te yourself. You're telling, you're telling, you're telling Someone else, like, oh, don't don't tell anyone when I'm not seeing you <laughs> yeah, already. Like, like, you're not doing I mean? it for them. Like, yeah, so yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's definitely... Um, th this is what Allah loves about fasting, though, isn't it? Is the fact that it's not something that you can, have, you can show off about. Mm. It's something that you don't see. Mm. You can't see someone's fasting. Yeah. And it's obviously something that you can, as you said, like, go anywhere and drink or eat mm -hmm. and break your fast. And when you do that and you maintain that, you know, Allah loves it because it's sincerely for, for His sake. Mm. And there's a reward for it of course, yeah, that yeah, Allah yeah. hasn't like mentioned. Like, mm. and for so many deeds, like Allah mentions the reward for it, mm. but Allah says that fasting is for me, and I'll reward it. So there's, I must see some immense, immense reward. Yeah, immense, immense. That Allah hasn't even described. Mm, mm, mm. Alhamdulillah for so the believers. Be, set, setting aside the fasting, mm. the month of Ramadan, mm. it's a beautiful month. Like, it's like um, it's like another realm. Like the the the, 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 the way the Muslims behave and just the vibe about it and just the um everything like you're just practicing much you're trying to be a better person do you know what i'm trying to say it's like almost like a small little rehab like you need to just mm. get back to what you're supposed to be doing yeah like, you're praying more you're praying on time you're not missing your salah you're you're reading more quran you're being better with people not just the muslims the, the non-muslims you're you're just being much more kind person giving in charity loads and loads of other elements to it and on top of that you're not even eating as i said so it's it's just, it's just the whole month of ramadan it's a it's a it's a beautiful experience it's like 
It's like a breath of uh, a fresh breath of new air, like do you know what I'm trying to say. I think what you said, like it's like a rehab sort of thing, is is very accurate. Yeah. It's a very sort of accurate mm. description of what it's like. Um, one one brother um, who I'm very close with, Abdullah from North London, he basically said in like a little talk that he did that was on YouTube. Someone filmed it, and he was talking about Ramadan, and he said, like, see Ramadan, it's like a, see like when you're in like a marathon. Mm. And let's look at life as like a marathon. It's like a long journey mm. in most instances, and Allah obviously could take our lives at any time. Yeah. But it's like a marathon, and when it comes to Ramadan, it's like you're at that. It's got to come into the end of that race, and you sprint. You know, when you sprint, mm. you up the pace. Mm. That's basically how he looks at Ramadan. When Ramadan comes, there's so much reward mm. in that month on obligatory actions and uh, voluntary actions that you go hard in that month. Yeah. Do you understand what yeah. I'm saying? That's when you, you, you push yourself a little bit further, you pray tarawih, mm. you spend more time reading the Qur'an because obviously Ramadan is the month of the Qur'an. Mm, the Qur'an mm. was revealed in the month of Ramadan mm. and every Ramadan, Jibreel, obviously the one who both of you, <laughs> you and I have his name, yeah. um, would come down to the Prophet ﷺ and check over the Qur'an. Mm. The Prophet ﷺ would recite the Qur'an to him. Mm. And on the year that the Prophet ﷺ passed away, Jibreel salam came twice. Mm to verify the Qur'an and, and, and check it. So it's a, mm. it's a unique month and um, definitely go hard in that month. I think before I was a Muslim, like, I don't even I don't even know if I really thought about Ramadan. I was aware of it. Mm. I've heard of it because it's such a well-known thing. Mm. I don't think there's any people around the world that who fast know. for 34 a month. Yeah, yeah. Um, and depending on what part of the world you're in as well, that fast can be a long one. Yeah, yeah. Like, do you be. understand it what I'm be, saying? Yeah. So it can be. It, it's, it's known, but I don't, I never really paid it much in mind, to be honest with you. Funnily enough, though, um, my first Ramadan, it actually came on my birthday. Mm. So my first Ramadan as a Muslim, rather than opening up presents, alhamdulillah, I got to fast. Mm, alhamdulillah, mashallah. Alhamdulillah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Didn't you? My, didn't yeah, I, t I, t I, took the sh I took shahada the day before Ramadan started. <laughs> so like, I was just right in the foot of it. But I think that's what... I think the way that was set up is so beautiful because Everyone's character was portraying the best Muslims that they can be at oh, that time. Of course, yeah. So I stepped into Islam while everyone just started the Ramadan, and um, I remember the day it was the day. You know what? It's mad. The day before, because remember, remember back on my other story how I became Muslim. It was mad raining and what have you. Yeah, and then yeah. the next day it was Ramadan. It was just the sun was out. It was just like a little, like a little, you know, little movies you were yeah, speaking yeah. right, birds are singing and everything. <laughs> but yeah, I stepped into it, and then um, the next day was um, the next day was Ramadan, and. Um, like I remember, I remember um, knowing I had to fast for the next thirty days, and a lot of people was like, oh, you know what? It's your foot. You're, you've only been Muslim for a day." Like um, they weren't. They, it, they were saying it's obligatory, but like they were just saying they were trying to say basically take it easy and what have you. Mm. But actually, wallahi, that's my easiest Ramadan. That was my my. It, it flew. It almost went by too fast. Do you know what I'm trying to say? I, I I enjoyed it because like I got to go to the masjid and it was packed. I got to see the Muslims for their best character and, as, as they could be. Um, the fasting was, it wasn't even hard. The fasting wasn't, for, I actually was like, let's, let's bring in the new day, let's do it again, let's do it again, let's do it again. But that was the easiest, easiest um, um, Ramadan for me. What are you saying, after Ramadan, you saw all the, all the people have gone after, in the masjid, just like, wow, wow, wow. Yeah, because I, yeah, I remember I stepped into the masjid and um, I just think, I was just thought, yeah, right, this is how the masjid always is. Like, I walked in the masjid, you can't even get a foot in, it's ramped and everyone's praying too late. And I'm thinking, right, this is how the deen is going to be. And this is actually quite beautiful. After Ramadan, like the last couple of um, days, I was like empty and empty and empty. And after that, two weeks after that, I just thought the masjid wasn't <laughs> the same as it was. Yeah. But, but you know what, though? What is, what is beautiful as well is that although, yeah, people use that month and they try to be the best they can be. And a lot of people do fall off after or whatever. But that is actually some, that actually, Ramadan changes someone's actual whole life. Yeah, no it doubt. Can change, it can change, you could be like on the most jahiliya path and you could be doing the most madnesses and all sorts of wrong and, 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 and what have you. But then you, there could be like, you could, you could have had like six, seven Ramadans, but there could, there could be that one that you just thought, all right, let me do things differently. And when you did do diff things differently, it changes your whole way of thinking. Like, you become a better person, you have salahs much more on time, you know, um, you're reading more Qur'an, you think, you think more like, let me get married, you think about things that you need to leave behind and, and change it for the, for, the, for the better. Yeah, Ramadan is definitely a special month. I'm, I'm, of, I'm aware of quite a few brothers actually mm. that um, Ramadan sort of changed their life, like especially born Muslims. Mm. You ask them like, bro, when did you start like 
praying in it. When mm. did you start practicing? And it was like after it would have been off during one Ramadan or another. Mm. So no doubt it's a blessed month. I mean, um, when like as I said, you 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 mentioned about your experience when you had your first Ramadan and mm. fasting and how beautiful it was and how easy Allah made it for you. Mm. Again, likewise for myself, I think I found Ramadan the same way. Mm -hmm. um, I was a Muslim for quite a few months before I'd accepted Islam, so I sort of was aware of how many people normally pray in the masjid mm -hmm. and, and sort of like what life is like as a Muslim a little bit before Ramadan. Mm -hmm. But I definitely remember my first Tarawih. Mm -hmm. It was in Old Kent Road Masjid. Oh, okay. So you would have been there as well, yeah, very yeah. likely. Mm -hmm. And um, it was the first time we was going to pray Tarawih. Mm. And I remember my brother looking at me in a row like, are you ready? Like, mm. And I was like, yeah, Alhamdulillah, I prayed it. Um, but yeah, no, it's, especially, it's a special experience, no doubt. I mean, the, the eating and drinking aspect of it is something that gets focused on not too much because it's fasting. Yeah, yeah. But um, I think a lot of the other parts of Ramadan and what it means to fast is sort of overlooked. Yeah, yeah. You know, like your temperament, lowering mm. your gaze, mm. your speech. Mm your actions. I, I remember one brother mentioning to me, there was one talk, um, one show that came out. I don't know if I can mention it, but anyway, some, some silly show that they put on, mm. my brother, the such and such. Yeah, yeah. And um, when it came to Ramadan, the guy said, yeah, I just sleep. I just sleep throughout the day. <laughs> I was like, what kind of example are you setting like <laughs> this? Like, but this is the thing, some people like, will do that. Mm, mm. They'll just sleep for the majority of the day. And mm. this isn't like what fasting is. No, no, no. Like, um, there's a narration as well where it's mentioned that Allah doesn't need or doesn't like want the fast of a person who like has like foul speech. Mm. So you know like if you switch and you start swearing, mm -hmm. well, that's going to affect your fast. Yeah. You could even possibly negate your fast mm. by, by acting it in, in that manner. Mm. So something that we all need to remember and brothers and sisters watching need to remember is that fasting during the month of Ramadan is more than just not eating and drinking. Of course, yeah. It's like controlling your temper, it's spending your time efficiently, mm. it's lowering your gaze. But I remember the best Ramadan I had, yeah, which also equaled into the best Eid I had, was what was one Ramadan where um, I made like a conscious, like a real sincere conscious intention that I'm going to lower my gaze this Ramadan. Mm. Because you see lowering your gaze in this country, it's mad, yeah, bro. It's like, it's just like, it's a myth, like... Yeah. It's, you might as well just close your eyes for... Just... It's mad, like, yeah. alhamdulillah, may, may Allah reward the, those brothers who are able to implement yeah, that. When I was on my way here, it's just, you know, a sisters, mashallah, there's something else, man, there. Like, their sort of, like, haya is just completely different to ours. Like, yeah. when I was walking here, um, I was walking past, uh, I think she was a white revert sister and, a, and there's another sister who looks like she was probably born mm. Muslim. And we was both walking down that she was coming this way, I was coming that way. She, the, the white sister, revert sister, she moved to the, further to the side of the street yeah. and looked down as well. Mashallah. And obviously, I, w I wasn't lowering my gaze, otherwise I wouldn't have seen that in yeah, it. Yeah. But I clocked, I was thinking to myself, SubhanAllah, man, like, these sisters, like, mm. mashallah, they're, 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 on, they're on point. Mm. But lowering your gaze is very, very difficult. And when, when I did that, alhamdulillah, when Allah granted me the ability, of course, I probably slipped up a couple of times, course, yeah, yeah. but I definitely felt like, alhamdulillah, I'm actually holding this up fairly well. Yeah, yeah. But it was one of the best Ramadans. Mm, mm, and mm. the Eid that I had was brilliant because I genuinely felt like I'd achieved something. Yeah. And there have been other Ramadans where, like, I felt to myself, you know what, yeah, you, you kind of you kinda went, um, what's that term? Like, you know, autopilot. Yeah, yeah. I kind of, like, put myself on autopilot. Mm. And I didn't push it. I didn't... You just did what you had, you're supposed to do. I just did what I had to do and just sort of like, almost sort of mentally detached myself a little bit from... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I get what you mean. From yeah, it. And yeah, then yeah. When, when, when Eid came, like, I didn't feel like... Mm. I didn't I even... Like, yeah, I didn't <laughs> feel like I deserved to celebrate. That's what's mad about, yeah, yeah. about these Muslims, like, yeah. who, who don't fast Ramadan, that's, but when Eid comes, they just, turn yeah, up, bro. Yeah, <laughs> it's mad, it's mad. That's, another, that's what I wanted to... I was, literally, I was going to say about that now. Like, there's, there's brothers like that... Muslims and non, non and unrevert, sorry, um, born Muslims and reverts, that they don't fast at all, and they just feel feel it as like it's cash, like it's just whatever. And then, as you said, Eid comes up, and then everyone's just pushing that that rental and they're going to this <laughs> spot and then doing this and that, whatnot. Wow. But like, it's they, people need to understand that the importance of, of fast is like it's it's, it's wide. You have to you have to fast. There's no leeway. Like as I said to you, when I wasn't when I became Muslim, and then and then the next day was. Um, uh, it was, was Ramadan for me, 
Um, although brothers were saying take it easy and whatever, not once did they say to me, Aki, you don't have to fast and because I have to. I, I'm in the religion now. Yeah. I have to do it. You can't just say no. I'm not going to fast or, but, or, or. But there is there is some leeway though, isn't mm. there? I mean, you, I'm sure you're aware of some of the circumstances in which like a person's the obligation of fasting is actually lifted from them. Yeah. You know, like for example, when a woman's well, menstrual uh, season. Yeah, yeah. yeah during yeah, yeah. that time of the of the month, a mm. woman's um, the obligation of fasting is lifted at that time. Mm -hmm. They have to make up for it after Ramadan. Yeah, yeah. But they don't have to fast. An elderly person. Someone that's ill. Someone that's ill. Of course, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Someone, yeah, like if you have diabetes and things mm. like that, you, you can't fast, but you can feed like a, a poor, poor person. person. Yeah, yeah. So there is, there is definitely, there, there is some leeway, alhamdulillah. Um, mm. But uh, I think that when it comes to Ramadan and the attitude that some people take towards it is you know how you mentioned about how people will not fast the month of Ramadan like it's like it's casual like it's not mm. a it's not an issue mm. basically it's become like a normality for them that yeah, yeah. they might they might fast maybe even a couple of days yeah, yeah and leave the rest of them you know I read the narration where the Prophet ﷺ said that the person who like intentionally doesn't fast or breaks their fast early they, they can never make up for that fast, even if they take a perpetual fast, which means that even if they fast for the rest of their life, mm. you'll never be able to make, make up, up for that, that day. One, yeah. mm. Which is mad, isn't it? When you think about it, like you mm. can't make up for it. It's done, it's gone. Yeah, it's so it's like, um, I think a, a good attitude, or the attitude that I generally take into Ramadan, mm. is just that it's not an option. Mm. You know when you just don't make something an option for yourself? Like it's not an option. It's yeah, yeah, like eating and it. drinking just isn't an option. It's not possible. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think I think one pe one like before Ramadan comes, um, there's certain things you need to do to prepare yourself for it. I think one of the main things is look at the surroundings, look where you, you are around, you look at things that may deter you from fasting and what have you, mm -hmm. and leave that. Like if there's companions that you know, if I chill with them, they're definitely. I would every Ramadan I'm with them. They never fast, and we always get up to the same rubbish. Leave that that them companions just like two, three weeks before Ramadan. Um, um, do certain things like e even even fasting Mondays and Thursdays. Try 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 do that so you're prepared for yourself. If you if you feel like oh, I'm, um, I need to get I need to get in the rhythm of things and stuff like that. Um, but but definitely like you need to you need to be able to to I think you should prepare yourself and 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 look look what, look at the things that you know that's gonna that's gonna mess up your Ramadan and 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 it's not gonna get you to your full potential and then think okay Rob what do I need to do when the month start that 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 remind that reminds me actually of another important part what you mentioned about the type of companions that you keep mm. um, and it's, and it's, and how it can affect your Ramadan mm. and sabotage it like, I remember when I was working um, for one company and. There was a Muslim brother there. There was many Muslims there, um, and to my knowledge, ma majority of them fasted as well, mm. even if they didn't really pray every, like all of their salah. Yeah. But there was one individual I was very close. I was very close with, and um, it came to Ramadan, and he started hanging, <coughs> started hanging around with, like some of the non-Muslim work colleagues mm. there, and. Um, do you know what? Like I remember, I was on my way to. This was Juma actually. You know, it was mm. Juma on Ramadan, and um, he had gone off with them. He'd mm. gone off like to lunch just with with them in it. Mm. And I, where they actually went to eat was where we passed for Juma. So I imagine it's Ramadan, it's Jomul Juma, and I see the brother eating with uh, sitting around the table with these with these non-Muslim colleagues yeah. eating. And like. I don't know, but you could just not see. I don't. Yeah, I guess you could see that. It's sort of like the shame on his face, yeah, slightly. Yeah. But it's like you know, if you if you like you said, if you keep certain company, it's like Allah warns in the Quran about yeah, this, yeah. man, about about taking these people as awliya, taking them mm. as protectors, helpers, mm. friends, because they won't fail to mislead you. Mm. You know, so um, for new Muslims who do have uh, non-Muslim companions, who even though they respect your religion. They say they respect your religion mm. and they won't never discourage you from fasting or praying. It's just the environment that you're around naturally with them is not conducive. Yeah, uh, and, 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 and if, if you're born Muslim and you're used to having family around doing Ramadan and all that have you, if you know someone that's not, that wasn't born Muslim and it's a revert, <coughs> it could be quite, that could be a tough month for them. <coughs> As I said, for me, I had a companion, two companions of mine that were, um, they were, they were born Muslims and I, I knew their family, they knew mine. 
So I always had them around me doing Ramadan. Like, oh, this is what you do. Because remember, I'm I'm jumping to Ramadan whilst I'm learning how to do wudu, mm. whilst I'm learning how to pray. This is how you do it like that. In the morning, if you can't get up and go a message with us, you have to do it like this and that. Da, da, da. So I'm learning all of them stuff. And they, they, they're more inclined to teach me because it's Ramadan and they're getting no, more no. agile. And there's so many things to it. So if you're a Muslim and you know a brother that's either a revert or a brother that hasn't been practicing for so long, he doesn't even know certain things to do, you need to keep him around you. You need to be able to invite him over to your, your inshallah, invite him over to your house to break fast with you. And, and, and maybe family, ask your family, oh, can we bring, because when I, when I was breaking fast, the, the brother that I was close with, I'd always go to his house, or his cousin's house. Bad. And we all always go and eat there and what have you. And obviously not excessively, but it was, there was it, I always felt like there's a family around me. I'm trying to say I'm not doing this on my own. There's people around me doing it, doing it with me. Do you know what? That's that's a very, very important, mm. very important point, actually, because I've heard that for some reverts who don't have Muslim f family and maybe they haven't had the time to make Muslim friends, mm. bro. Like Ramadan is even more challenging mm. because you're not around anyone who's fasting. Mm. You don't have any friends that you can relate to who are fasting. But alhamdulillah, show, have the steadfastness, do you understand? Have mm, the steadfastness mm. 100%. We never make excuses for ourselves like that. We're, we're men, you know, and we, mm, we, mm. we handle our affairs. But eat in particular, uh, yes. bro, like fasting is done now. Mm. Now we're talking about eat, celebration. Yeah. But I've heard instances where for new Muslims, eat is supposed to be a celebration. They said it's been a depressing time for yeah, them yeah. because they haven't got, they're not married yet. They mm. don't have Muslim family. Mm. And their Muslim friends that they do have, they've, they've gone. got family. Mm. They, in many instances, they'll be married mm. and they've got kids, so they're spending the day with the family. Mm. So um, what I used to do was, um, alhamdulillah, I got married like two months into the deen. Mm. So what I used to do was, I used to spend the day with my, my, with my family mm. and then in the evening, I would, I would, yeah, so yeah, I, there yeah. would be like one brother, Islam, Another brother, Abdurrahim, mm. they, they wasn't time. married. You've, yeah, you, yeah, you came as well, yeah, innit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, now like, he used to make a conscious effort to do that to spend time with yeah. your, your um, revert companions who you know Haven't are going to be by themselves. Be, mm. be by themselves. Do you mm. understand? And I'm, I'm familiar with actually other projects that brothers run mm. that um, they actually arrange like an like an Eid dinner for mm. new Muslims. Mm. And there's one business close to um, the Masjid in Lewisham actually who did that. Mm. It's like a burger place, like a gourmet burger place, mm. and they um, they had a space available for like maybe even 50 brothers, 50 yeah, revert mashallah. brothers who don't have Muslim families and they all got to spend the time together, mashallah. Yeah, so yeah, it was, yeah. it's it was good. beautiful. But they, them, they, like, them things are really good to do. Like there's always Eid in the park, I might have you, but if yeah. you're one up, like you, you, you're, not, you're gonna go Eid in the park, you're gonna walk around, but you don't even know much people. All the brothers that you do know, they're with their families, they, they just headed off and what have you. Yeah. So even though them things are available, it's still good to just be able to be like, yo, Aki, listen, come with me today. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? If you know anybody else, just come, come, just come. Because no, no. I had that. I, I had, even before I was Muslim, when they used to go break fast at home or in Eid, I used to go to chill with them anyway. Do you know what I'm trying to say? I, I've always had that, alhamdulillah. Like I was able to go to the house and eat and what have you, but there's many brothers like they'll go to the the um, the, the Friday the, the, the so the morning prayer and then um, it's just like nothing. You know what I mean? to do like, after yeah, that. and then you go home to your non-Muslim family and like, oh, you see. Like, well, alhamdulillah. I mean, to well, look, I mean, we've, you got to keep you got to keep strong regardless, though. We've clarified that you know we've covered a lot actually, rather about Ramadan, mm. how what a blessed month it is, how to go about dealing with it. Mm. Um, and alhamdulillah, I'm pretty sure a lot of the brothers and sisters who are listening would have benefited f from this advice and definitely can relate to it. Yeah. Um, so inshallah ta'ala, they, they've benefited from it. Um, Jibreel, barakallahu feek well, again for your time. Brothers and sisters, uh, we've come to the end of the show today. Um, hopefully you've benefited from it, as I have. I always benefit from these talks. And um, again, I hope that Allah grants you all the ability to fast successfully during the month of Ramadan. Make a firm intention to do it. It could change your life for the better. Um, and until next time, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.